Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to you all, from those down the road to the folks around the world. Welcome back to another Wednesday weekly video. Back on the same theme of the Quick Short Facts series, this time looking at 1971. If you haven't seen the rest of this series, which I've been doing over the past few weeks, there'll be a link at the end of this video. But for now, let's get on with things. Now let's first start with the crux of this series, the crux of this video. It's the census, of course, here in the UK. This year, 2021, is a census year as it was in 1971. Preliminary reports from that census 50 years ago showed that more people than ever were refusing to fill in their census forms. This, of course, is a legal requirement and so would incur a penalty fine. It has been a legal requirement ever since 1921. This year, if you fail to fill in your census form, all of it, of which is online, you can incur a £1,000 penalty. But the 10 years between 1961 and 1971 saw another increase in the population by another 3 million people, taking the grand total of the UK population to 55 million. In April 1971, the UK unemployment level stood at 800,000, the highest it had ever been since May 1940. At the end of the year 1971, £160 million pounds of public money was pushed to solve this unemployment problem for the UK government. A new divorce law was put into place in the UK on January the 1st, 1971. It cited that a divorce could be made on the grounds of irretrievable breakdown. The first of these new divorces was made on the 11th of January. In late February 1971, the UK government decided to create 60 new commercial radio stations for UK. So today you have commercial radio stations like Heart, Capital or Classic FM commercial radio stations that have advertisements like you would see on TV, perhaps. Motorcycle crash helmets became compulsory in the UK in July of 1971. Russian space expert Anatol Fedoseyov became Britain's most important and high profile defector to the UK. The UK government granted the man asylum in June 1971. The Barbican Art Centre in the UK was given £17 million for the go-ahead of construction. Now, during 1971, there were a number of social upheavals, political shifts and overthrowings of power in many countries across the world. One such country is in Uganda, where the President Milton Obote, who was in, at a Commonwealth conference uh, in, in Singapore, he was overthrown from the presidency by his army commander, I.D. Armin. Armin accused uh, Abote, President Abote, of corruption, tribalism and putting forth an economic policy that was benefiting the richest more than the poorest. Within the first couple of days of coming to power, I.D. Armin made sure that political prisoners on false or unspecified charges were released. He released 55, but he also banned all political activity within the country. Now, within his first month of coming to power, I.D. Armin proclaimed himself the president. He promoted himself to the rank of general and he stopped the state of emergency that Milton Obote had put in years previous. He also said that he was going to be in power for five years, but not to be concerned because civilian rule would come after that five year period and elections would be held. Countries were quick to recognise this new I.D. Armin uh, presidency and state of rule in Uganda. March the 12th, 1971, saw the Turkish army force the premier of the country, Suleiman Demirel, to resign from office. On the 23rd of March, 1971, the Argentinian leader, Roberto Levington, was ousted in a bloodless coup. Haitian President Francois de Valier, also known as Papa Doc, died on April the 22nd, 1971. De Valier was known for his 
totalitarian and despotic rule ever since 1958. Now, he was replaced when he died in 1971 by his son, Jean-Claude, a 19 year old law student who vowed that under his presidency, he was going to end his father's reign of terror. On the 17th of June 1971, Malta went through an election which was won by the socialist leader Dom Mintov. Mintov, on the 30th of June, then scrapped a 10-year defence treaty signed with the United Kingdom. He also then charged the United Kingdom £20 million for its air bases position on the island. NATO withdrew its Mediterranean headquarters from the island of Malta and talks between the two governments of the UK and Malta ended with no progression whatsoever as Mintov defended his stance on £20 million in rent. In Sudan, the Sudanese people witnessed a coup and then a counter coup of government, restoring the power of General Gaffa al Numeri within four days. King Hassan of Morocco thwarted attempts to overthrow him from power on July 14th, 1971. On the 29th of July, 1971, Marshal Tito of the communist state Yugoslavia, he won another election, putting him back in power for another five years. So no surprise there, really. On the 15th of August, 1971, Bahrain becomes an independent nation and immediately signs a friendship treaty with the United Kingdom. On the 22nd of August 1971, right-wing rebels in Bolivia took control through an army coup. Reverting to its original name, Egypt, along with Libya and Syria, combined together in mid-1971 to form the Federation of Arab Republics. Now, Egypt had called itself the UAR, the United Arab Republic. Now, in 1961, this UAR name was with Egypt and Syria as well. But Syria had broken off in 1961 and the Egyptians just never changed the name, right up obviously until 1971, 10 years later. After six years of frosty relations between one another, the United Kingdom and Rhodesia came together and restored constitutional links. In 1971, the UK officially joined the EEC, the European Economic Community, after making an official application in 1961, which had been very resistant from uh, President Charles de Gaulle in the 1960s. But new French President Georges Pompidou was very eager to have the UK join the economic community. And by the middle of 1971, the UK was well on its way to joining. The ministers in Parliament voted 356 in favour of joining and 244 against. But these 244 weren't against necessarily joining it. They were more against how we were joining the economic community. And most of those ministers voting against were from the Labour Party, were from the opposition party. Other ways in which we fell into line with the European community was the introduction of VAT, which we still have in the UK to this day. Now, 1971 was a relatively early phase of what is now known as the Troubles in Northern Ireland. 100th victims were marked on the 6th of August 1971. A 14-year-old girl who went out into the streets to collect what she thought were rubber bullets for souvenirs. An 18-month-year-old child became a victim of the IRA. Police officers, UK soldiers, who had been stationed in the country since 1969. And in fact, more soldiers were sent to Northern Ireland as things progressed and as things got worse within the Ulster state. Now, the IRA was split into two different categories, the official IRA and the provisional IRA. There was even a bombing over at the post office tower in London, suggesting that this wasn't just a trouble for Northern Ireland, but it was going to affect uh, the UK as well. Now, this trouble period would last from 1968 right up until Good Friday of 1998, marking a, a dark period in Irish history. 
With the success of Apollo 11 in July 1969, NASA made further attempts using the Apollo program to get more people onto the moon. Now, in 1971, that looked like Apollo 14 and Apollo 15. Apollo 14 launched in February of 1971 and had a modified rocket and a modified computer system compared to that of the failed mission of Apollo 13. It took about a week to get to the moon and put persons five and six onto the surface of the moon. A few months later, in July of 1971, saw the launch of Apollo 15, putting persons seven and eight onto the surface of the moon and was one of the few times when a rover was used to drive across the surface of the moon. The USSR, of course, had its own space programme, and this was in the form of the Soyuz programme which in 1971 launched Soyuz 10 and Soyuz 11, both of which were launching into Earth's orbit, with Soyuz 10 launching in April of 1971 and uh, Soyuz 11 launching in early July of 1971. Soyuz 10 was rather standard, it went up, it came down, it landed safely. But unfortunately, the Soyuz 11 was a lot more tragic. The three cosmonauts that were launched in early July 1971 sadly lost their lives upon re-entry and upon landing. Hundreds of thousands of people lined the streets of Moscow to commemorate these three individuals who had lost their lives. And this was just three short weeks before the Apollo 15 had launched over in America. In Switzerland, in February 1971, women gained voting powers in national elections. But in the other tiny state of Liechtenstein, the already small male electorate refused this same liberty within their country. Former leader of the USSR Nikita Khrushchev from 1956 to 64 died in late September 1971 at the age of 77. He did not receive a state funeral, nor was he buried at the Kremlin Wall. It seems that the Communist Party members wanted to distance themselves from the former leader, much how like Khrushchev had done 10 years previous when he implemented its anti-Stalinist policies. In the Congo, uh, the country changes its name to Zaire, spelt like this. The Vietnam War had raged through the 1960s, dominating US politics, foreign policy, its media outlets of newspapers, broadsheets and radio, and caused a lot of anti-protests throughout the country. In one case in 1971, uh, 30,000 anti-war protesters standing at the banks of the River Potomac were expelled by Washington police. Muhammad Ali was cleared of draft dodging by the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court also gave the go ahead for uh, the New York Times and the Washington Post to publish certain Pentagon papers regarding the Vietnam War. When it came to politics, presidential candidates for the Democratic Party were promising to withdraw United States military by 1972. And Richard Nixon would also go on to promise later in the year of 1971 that 45,000 United States troops would be withdrawn by Vietnam in the coming February of 1972. Now, despite the politics and the promises and the Supreme Court rulings, what was actually happening in Vietnam was rather different and very much critical in 1971. You see, the North Vietnamese were using the country of Laos, their neighbour, as a supply route, supplying their military forces fighting against the South and, of course, the Americans. So the South Vietnamese forces decided to bomb and attack Laos and these supply routes, finding a number of arms and militia along these, the, these trade routes. This came into heavy criticism amongst the American public. The Senate House in Washington was actually bombed in protest against this attack on Laos. And in fact, the Washington protest I mentioned just a moment ago was another reaction to this Laos bombing. Another major incident from 1971 regarding Vietnam was 
a military trial of 26 United States personnel for their involvement in the My Lai massacre of March 1968, an incident where 400 individuals, Vietnamese civilians, were murdered, some even mutilated, some even as young as 12. Now, the trial saw 26 individuals standing trial, but only one of them was actually convicted and charged. Lieutenant William Kelly was charged with 22 counts of murder against Vietnamese civilians. But the My Lai massacre is not a singular anomalous case for the Vietnam War. Reports were coming out of Vietnam throughout the entire length of the war regarding brutal murders, massacres, uh, mutilations on both sides of the field. And it is another one of those reasons why there were so many anti-war demonstrations. When India declared itself independent in 1947, so too came the creation of West and East Pakistan, two seemingly separate countries at either end of the Indian border. Skip ahead to March the 26th, 1971. East Pakistan declares itself independent and renamed Bangladesh. This in turn would cause a civil war between these two separate nations. What soon followed was a refugee crisis, because by June 1971, two million Bangladeshi residents were coming into uh, the Indian state. The Indian government having to request foreign aid and even a concert being put on in Madison Square Garden in order to raise money to help those in this Bangladeshi refugee crisis. However, the Indian government soon had to cut off these refugees from getting through the border. There was a cholera outbreak in West Bengal, right next to uh, the, the Bangladeshi border. But despite this setback of closing the border, India was drawn into the conflict between these two states. A number of border clashes between the Indian military and the Pakistani military soon escalated into a full-scale war by December 1971. And within a few short weeks, the Indians had defeated the Pakistanis and were able to instate and recognise the Bangladeshi government in the city of Dhaka. On November the 28th, 1971, Rome saw 100,000 anti-fascist protesters marching through its streets. Two months after the initial incident, a report came out suggesting that Chairman Mao's heir to his uh, leadership throne, Lao Piao, actually died in a plane crash, having tried to flee the country for the USSR. Now, this report about Chairman Mao's heir dying came just one day after the first Chinese delegates entered the United Nations. Now, throughout 1971, the UN had wanted and recommended that China be brought into this global community, this United Nations. And it also comes just a few months after President Nixon eased the trade boycott between the US and China, allowing for non-military goods to be brought into the country. In early 1971, the UK was one of 40 nations to sign a treaty banning the use of nuclear weapons along the seabed. On January the 10th, 1971, the famous fashion brand and perfume seller Coco Chanel died at the age of 87. The Kennedy Art Centre was opened on the 8th of September 1971. The premiere of Bernstein's Mass was played in honour of the former president. A new Cuban crisis could have occurred in 1971 as President Nixon warned the USSR of putting subs into Cuban waters. In the USSR, having longer hair was made legal in early January 1971. In mid-1971, the South African government allowed for mixed race sports teams to compete in international competitions. And that concludes my 1971 quick short facts video. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope you've come to understand a little bit more about what the year 1971 was looking like in the UK and around the world. 
you have enjoyed what you've seen, and you've come to learn something a little bit more, then please do click the little thumbs up like button down below and maybe even consider subscribing too. Perhaps I might have missed something or perhaps I might have gotten something maybe slightly wrong. If that is the case, then please do drop a comment down below. That helps myself and it helps other viewers understand 1971 just that little bit better. Other than that, the final episode of this series is going to be next week, uh, talking about the year 1981. But until then, I'm going to wish you all a safe and happy week, and I will see you all next week.